I'm going to demonstrate a finished motor control project. Let's launch the MATLAB client by specifying the COM port. We're now presented with the menu. I've already loaded gains onto the PIC, so we can go right to specifying a step trajectory. The step trajectory consists of pairs of times and angles, and we want the motor to go to a given angle at a given time. So we'll start off at 0, 0. Then at one second, we'll move to 90 degrees. At two seconds, we'll move to 180 degrees. At three seconds, we'll move to 90 degrees again. And finally, at four seconds, we'll end back at zero. Now we're loading the trajectory onto the PIC32. Once we're done, MATLAB should plot the trajectory that we just specified. And there it is. Now let's run the trajectory. See how the motor moves to the different positions and then holds its position at the end. Not bad. We can also specify a cubic trajectory. These trajectories are specified in the same way as step trajectories, except the interpolation between points is different. We'll start off at 0, 0. At 0.5 seconds, that's also specified to be at 0. At 1, we'll be at 360 degrees. Remember, 360 is not the same as 0 here. It's one full rotation around. At 2, we'll be at 90 degrees. At 3, we'll go back to 0. And just for good measure, at 4 seconds, we'll also stay at 0. Let's see what that trajectory looks like. And now let's execute the trajectory. The motor moved. How close were we, though? Wow, that was pretty close. So as you can see, you can make the motor follow trajectories that you specify on your computer. Now, before we were able to do that, there are a lot of other steps that we had to do. Let's take a look at some of the lower level features. It makes sense to build up these lower level features first as they help you debug as you go. First thing we can do is stop the motor. That's a pretty important feature. We can also read the current sensor in ADC counts or in milliamps. Right now it says eight milliamps. That's probably just a little bit of a minor calibration issue, not too big of a deal. We can also read the encoder directly in counts or in degrees. And see, if we spin the motor, we can notice that the encoder is moved. So by having these features, we can test some of them independently. For example, you don't need to be able to power the motor in order to test the encoder, like I just did. You can also reset the zero point of the encoder. See, now the encoder is zero when it, the bar is almost straight up, a little slanted. We can also set and get gains. What current gains were we using? 50,000 and 200, that's crazy. Well, just remember, it all has to do with how the gains are scaled in your implementation. And your gains will be different because your implementation is different. We can also see what we did for the position gains. And of course, we can set the gains to something else if we'd like. Now remember, there's two control loops, a position control loop and a current control loop. That's why there's two sets of gains here. We can test the current control loop with a pre-specified trajectory and see how well our current control loop did. Not great, but it serves for our purposes. Now, another basic feature is just moving to an angle. Remember, right now we're at zero degrees. Let's move to 90 degrees. Now we're holding this trajectory until we unpower the motor. And that about sums up the features. Of course, you can add extra details to this if you want, such as being able to store the gains on the flash of the PIC32. But other than that, this is, demonstrates the basic functionality 